So first of all, just kind of basics, like what is a uh, product launch? Um, and a product launch is, um, the gist of it is, is just to, um, you know, do certain tasks when you first launch a product um, to make sure that you get visibility and rank on Amazon. That's kind of the, the uh, quick spiel and, and kind of the, uh, you know, what a launch is. Kind of the, I've, we've got kind of steps here. I got, uh, let's see, 14 steps. Um, but I'm sure there's more, but this is just kind of to guide us along. I don't like to do super long winded uh, notes when I do these things. Cause otherwise, um, I get lost in them. So I like to just kind of have an overview. Um, so first thing we we're, we're going to want to do is, um, make sure that your, um, Amazon listing is fully optimized. Now, um, what that means is, you know, things like, uh, images, title, uh, description, bullet points. Those are the basics. Um, if your product only has like two or three bullet points, uh, you've got a big issue and uh, it's crazy, but I swear to God, I get so many people coming to me saying, I'm not selling, I'm not ranking what's going on. And I pull their listing up and they've got two or three bullet points. <laughs> and I'm just like, holy crap. Uh, so that's an essential. What I tell people is, um, you have to look at your, your listing and optimizing your listing as like deposits in a bank. Um, uh, you know, it's like the, the one thing that's, uh, it's like the foundation of your Amazon business that the more that you put into that, the more it's going to return in the, in the long run. You know, it's like that, uh, that, that free organic reach. It's like, you know, planting your garden. I'd say like for social media, whenever you're doing a post, you're, you're, you're putting a new seed in your social media garden. Same thing for Amazon. Like every time you're doing something that, to optimize your listing, you're like, you're going to grow that listing uh, organically. So that's kind of the first um, step with, with that listing optimization. Marcus, um, anything I'm missing or anything you want to add to that? No, um, you know, it, it's something that, that I actually talk about a lot too with clients and, and it's, uh, it's important to, um, to, to, to look at your listing as unbiasedly as possible. Like we all have premium products. I think my stuff is the best stuff in the world. Um, but sometimes it takes, you know, like my wife or a friend or, or like a colleague in the space to look at your, my listing and be like, well, what does this mean? or I don't understand, you know, so uh, that's important to me is, is getting that outside perspective. Um, when it comes to copy, I always tell people like it, at the very least read your copy out loud. And if it doesn't flow, then change it. If it doesn't sound natural, um, or even have the best thing to do is have somebody else read it back to you. Uh, it, you know, because you, you can really, if it doesn't, if it, if it doesn't flow, when you talk about it, it's not going to flow when you think about it and it's going to break up somebody's thought process. Um, something else that's really cool that I've been using a lot lately. Um, I haven't used it for Amazon listings, but um, it actually might work really well is if you go into Google docs, a lot of people don't know this. There's a Google docs tool. Um, that's a, it's a voice recognition tool. So it's kind of like dragon naturally speaking and stuff like that, where you can literally push a button and then just start dictating and it'll just start filling it out in Google docs. Um, that's a really, really good way to write, find it kind of for anything. Um, even including, um, uh, you know, for Amazon, because then it's going to come out sounding, you know, really natural. And then you can uh, go back and, and edit it. Not only that, but it's going to be really quick. Um, you know, if you do like an outline of what you want your listing to cover, and then you speak it, you actually might get some, you know, some really cool content that way. So something to think about and, uh, and possibly try. Um, <clears throat> Now, Barkus, um, you know, there, there's always a debate about like backend keywords, subject keywords, all those kinds of things. What do you guys tell, tell your clients? What do you do for those? For backend keywords? Like what to use or? Well, just, um, just what's your fear on that? I know that like people uh, are always like, should I use brand names? Should I use, you know? Are we going to talk about conspiracy use? theories? <laughs> no, anything, anything. I love that. Those are the best today. Yeah, I mean, I, I keep it pretty simple. Keep it limited to the 250 bytes or characters, whatever you want to call them. Um, there's no need to repeat a keyword. So if I've got beard oil in my title, obviously I've got it in my title. I'm not going to have beard or oil in my back end terms. Um, you know, and I kind of, I like to follow uh, what Amazon says as much as possible. Um, so I really just kind of, I kind of follow that. I do use some tools to kind of decide, and I, I'm always testing and I think I'm, I think that's maybe a fault of mine but I'm always looking to see which one's maybe a higher traffic search phrase or search or a keyword and maybe try to input that in my title and in the bullet points or description and try to see if, um, you know, see if any rankings increase, uh, just, just naturally. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's a good point. And I actually don't think that's a bad thing. I think testing is testing. Your listing is probably one of the best things that's, you know, back to like tending your garden. 
that's one of the best things and, and what tons and tons of people don't do is to go back and, uh, and re-optimize the listing. They'll, they'll optimize it and then they'll leave it alone. Um, you know, but what people get, you know, what you can do, uh, some of the things you can do to really get that thing dialed in is look at your search term report on your PVC and see what you're converting for there. Um, those are really good keywords that you want to probably, um, you know, uh, include into your listing. Um, like Marcus was talking about in our testing, um, you know, listing optimized, uh, optimization wise, we, we, we think three is the magic number. So like if you have an important phrase in your title, you want it at least in like your bullet point and then in your description as well. Um, if you really want to hit it hard, you might want to put that phrase, um, you know, more than once in the description or in the uh, bullet points. Um, but it all comes down to testing, um, you know, depending on the category and, you know, the fields available, it really, um, it can really make a, a, a big difference on uh, just a few factors like that. Also, um, what a lot of people don't realize is the more fields that you fill in in the back end, so like, uh, you know, color, material, all those things, Amazon indexes, and those are a great way to kind of get a little extra uh, bump. So, um, Marcus, do you sell, the stuff that you sell, is it, is, is it in like plastic or glass or like, what's, glass. Like, what's that? Glass, bo glass bottles. Yeah, okay, cool. So, do you have any, any breakage issues there? No, I have a, I, I wrap it in. Uh, I've got these little pouches uh, okay. that are bubble pouches, and then I throw it in a padded envelope as well. So yeah, so so that's probably I haven't had any yet, right? So that's good. So that's you know, but that's a super premium. Like when you get somebody, uh, when you when you sh give somebody something in a bottle that's glass, that's so rare nowadays because of the breakage issue. Um, that's you know that that feels super premium, and so. Uh, Marcus, I'm sure you you have you know glasses material somewhere in your in your thing, or or you might highlight that somewhere. Um, yeah. You know those are those are kind of extra things that you want to really think about when you're building that listing is kind of the add-on uh, information that you add to that listing, which is going to get indexed um, and possibly give you give you some extra extra bumps. But one of the I thought it was interesting you were talking about you know just kind of speaking um, because if in my mind the first bullet is really where you have to get your customers attention and I always think of that as the strongest selling point in a listing um, and so something an exercise that I do with folks is I say okay if, if you're at a market and you're at an outdoor market and you're selling your beard oil <laughs> uh, and I'm walking by and I kind of glance in your direction what is the one thing you're gonna say to me to get me to stop and talk to you Hey, hey, that you don't is, have a beard. Hey, you don't have a beard. <laughs> that is the same. That's the same thing that you should be thinking about using in your listing. Because, you know, if you take a sales course, it says it, you know, in any sales course will tell you it takes an average of 12 touches, 12 times of talking to someone before they'll even make a buying decision with you. And when you think about on Amazon, you really only have like less than 30 seconds of somebody just glancing at your hero image and then maybe clicking on your listing or your advertisement. And they're really just going to look at those images and maybe like your first bullet point. So if you can't capture their attention with your main selling point of why they should actually, why they need this in their life, you're going to miss out on those sales. So that that's my, my main thing that I try to have people do is like, Hey, think about your, your strongest selling point. If I was walking by you in a market, what would you say to me to get me to stop and really consider your product?